Hello everyone. Good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to the session again. And today I'm going to share about, uh, talk about overview of micro and macronutrients and the importance of those things. So let's straight away go into the next, next part. Give me a second. So today's objectives are, uh, we'll discuss about what are macronutrients and their uses, micronutrients and their uses, what is an ideal food plate look like, and different resources where you can find the, the things which I'm going to discuss in today's topic. So what are macronutrients? Macronutrients are the nutrients that are required in larger quantities to feed our body, to make to do its bodily functions. So these micronutrients includes carbohydrates, proteins, fats, fiber, and water. So these are the five components that are required in a bigger quantities to maintain our bodily functions. Coming to carbohydrates, carbohydrates, these uh, macronutrients will help provide energy to our body. Uh, I would like to discuss this taking a model of a car. Let's see uh, when you buy, when there is, even example, you imagine a car, there is a car and what is the most important thing that helps to run the car? It's the engine. So the same way carbohydrates are like the engine. Uh, so the, the role of engine is to supply fuel and make the car running, right? The same way the carbohydrates also provide energy for our daily activities. We need energy to walk. We need energy to digest things. We need energy to move from place to place. So uh, though we have structural formats, like though we have uh, muscles, though we have our digestive system, everything placed in place, but we need that fuel and energy to make things moving and going forward. So carbohydrates are those macronutrients that helps to provide overall energy to the body. And uh, we need at least 50% of our diet should consist of carbohydrates. For example, in a sedentary man needs 1800 kilocalories per day and women needs 1500 kilocalories per day. So out of 1800 kilocalories, 50% of the calories, you should get it from carbohydrates. So, uh, so carbohydrate is like engine for our body. So definitely provide your body with healthy carbohydrates. The sources of carbohydrates include all grains, um, cereals, pulses, all these things will have carbohydrates. Comparatively, grains are very rich in carbohydrates. These grains include rice, wheat, barley, oats, millets, all these things are very rich in carbohydrates. So focus on taking whole grain instead of going for the refined carbohydrates. What are refined carbohydrates? The When you uh, remove all the fiber from a grain, then that is called as a refined. For example, if you are taking rice, brown rice is a whole grain, whereas taking white rice is a refined carbohydrate. And, uh, you know, supplementing, uh, I mean, replacing uh, rice with millets. Millets are um, whole grains again, whereas when you take maida or uh, corn flour, refined corn flour or refined wheat flours, like semolina, all these things are refined carbohydrates. Refined carbohydrates are divide, devoid of uh, fiber, whereas uh, unrefined whole grains are intact with fiber. So such kind of carbohydrates are more important to our body when compared to refined carbohydrates. So it is better to avoid refined carbohydrates in your diet, uh, including sugars or also refined carbohydrates. They are simple sugars. They, get, they give you glucose instantly. So it's better to avoid refined carbohydrates and focus on taking wholesome carbohydrates. Coming to the next thing, proteins. Proteins are like uh, we were discussing uh, that carbohydrates like engine for a car, whereas protein is like the structure of the car. So when you sit in a car, you have seats, you have doors. So the structural part of the car is something related to the protein. Similarly, the proteins are required to build the structure of our body. Our muscles are made up of protein. Our tissues are made up of protein. Even our cellular structures are made up of protein. The DNA backbone of our uh, DNA is also made up of amino acids, which again are derived from proteins. So protein is very much important for, form, for making your structure so robust and uh, making you more strong 
Even protein is very important to build your immune system. It helps to fight against diseases and protein helps to, uh, protein is required to make your hair, skin and uh, protein also uh, supplies amino acids to the body. These amino acids, again, when, when you break down them into simpler molecules, group of amino acids make a protein. So again, when the body takes protein, it breaks down into amino acids and these amino acids form structural units of many things in the body. For example, the DNA structural unit is also having amino acids. So protein itself is very important and the sources of protein include lean cuts of meat, fish, uh, nuts and seeds also have certain amounts of protein and coming to vegetable sources of protein, legumes, pulses, um, actually vegetable plant-based proteins are a mixture of carbs and protein. Uh, grains are very rich in uh, carbohydrates, whereas legumes and pulses, they have a good amount of protein as well, along with the carbohydrates. So legumes, pulses, all the legumes include all the beans, uh, chana, rajma, chole, all those things. Pulses include all dal, stor dal, urad dal, moong dal, all these things including pulses. Soya is a very good plant-based protein. Uh, fish, chicken, uh, lean cuts of meat, mutton, all these things are also very rich in protein. Certain smaller amounts of protein is also present in nuts and seeds like uh, pista, almonds, uh, brazil nuts, walnuts, cashew nuts, all these also have a little amount of protein. Uh, so uh, it, including them in your regular diet is very important. Uh, coming to protein, at least a person requires 0 0.8 grams of protein per kg body weight. If the person is, you know, doing moderate amount of activity, but as the activity level increases, the protein requirement also increases. It goes up to 1 kg or 1.2 to 1.3 kg. For athletes, it's almost 1.8 to 2 grams of protein per kg body weight is required. So uh, it uh, the amount of protein required is basically depends upon what kind of activity are you doing and at what stage of, uh, you know, chronologically you are at what stage like if you, if you are a kid then your protein requirement is high if you are a sedentary person your requirement is low if you are a geriatric person then uh, it is little higher but again you need to check with the digestion and all so the dependency of protein the requirement of protein uh, depends upon at what stage of life you are into and uh, what kind of activity you are doing. Uh, if you are sick, if you have fallen sick, if you wanted to recover, again, your protein content should be high. So uh, consulting a uh, you know, professional to know your protein requirement is the best option to do. And coming to the next thing, uh, fats. So we learned about carbohydrates, we learned about proteins, now coming to fats. Fats are like uh, you know the protective layer for the body. So again, when coming to the car, we see windshields, we see doors. It is all coated and protected with the metallic structure. Uh, the same way, even our organs are protected with the fat. There is fat around kidneys. There is fat around liver. Um, there is fat subcutaneously, like under the skin, we have fat. Fat is basically the insulating system that, you know, it keeps us warm. Uh, it helps to protect our organs. And it also helps to store certain fat soluble vitamins that we'll discuss in a later stage. And uh, it, fats also produce energy. See, everything, carbohydrates, proteins, and fats also produce energy. Uh, fat gives like one gram of fat gives like uh, nine kilocalories of energy. So these are very energy dense uh, macronutrients. Fats are energy dense macronutrients. So when you are using fats into your diet, you should be using them very cautiously because excessive uh, calorie intake, for most of the people, excessive calorie intake comes from the fat itself. So you should be really cautious when using the fat into your uh, diet. So it is a calorie dense macronutrient. Um, so at least you should get a, at least 30% of your daily calories should come from fat. The sources of fat includes uh, ghee oils that we get from seeds, uh, rice bran oil, coconut oil, groundnut oil, sesame seed oil. So we get fats from there. We get fats from seeds and nuts as we were discussing previously, almonds, walnuts, cashews. These are 
primarily rich in fats and secondarily also they get they contain some kind of proteins little amount of proteins but majorly they have fats in them all nuts and seeds will have fats certain kinds of fish like salmon all the sea water fish will have fat in them good fat like omega 3 and uh, fat is also present in uh, um, yeah like palm oil like you know vegetable oils also do have fats in them so these are the sources of fat and this is the function of fats and coming to the next macronutrient it is uh, let me see i think i have okay we'll answer the questions after the session i think i have got few questions yes doctor do you want to answer it right now or can we move forward uh, yeah we'll move forward and once the session is okay. done we'll no it. okay done doctor thank, thank you. you thank you so coming to the next thing is that fiber now coming uh, fiber is like you know it it helps to clean the system basically there are two types of fibers that we acquire from our diet one is soluble fiber the other one is insoluble fiber soluble fiber is uh, let me explain you with a fruit uh, when you take an apple uh, the pulp in the apple is a soluble fiber whereas the peel of the apple is an insoluble fiber soluble fiber helps in absorption of water like you know once the food is digested and enters the intestine uh, the ex excessive amounts you know the nutrients get absorbed and the excessive amount of water gets absorbed and uh, these things will form bulk of your bowels so fiber helps to uh, you know reduce your cholesterol levels the excess cholesterol will get Uh, you know trapped into the soluble fiber and gets excreted through bowels so for that soluble fiber is very important excess glucose also gets absorbed into the soluble fiber thing and it gets uh, it, it it gets eliminated so for elimination procedure soluble fiber is most important and for movement so to make this bowels moving insoluble fiber is very important so having fiber in diet is most important it helps to control your glucose levels it helps to reduce the cholesterol levels it helps to detox the body and push all the toxins away from the body and it also reduces the constipation and gastric issue so sources of fiber are fresh fruits and vegetables so apples um, berries avocado avocado is a source of um, you know fat but apples berries fresh fruits and vegetables are very good source of fiber and coming to water so you know that uh, every cell uh, most of the body is made up of water uh so we uh, the water is very important our plasma blood everything is fluid to keep things moving inside the body we need water uh, to maintain electrolyte balance we need water to keep your cells fresh and uh, you know uh, cleansing your body we need water so water is most important part of you know you have to have water in your regular life diet like uh, people can stay without food for longer time but they cannot stay without water for longer period of time again intake of water uh, how much amount of water you need to take again it depends upon what kind of activities you are doing like if you are an athlete you need more amount of water if you are breastfeeding mom you need more amount of water but if you are having any chronic illness like kidney conditions and all then the water requirement goes down so it's basically depending on what kind of uh, you know phase of life you are into but definitely hydration is more important roughly around 2.5 to 3 liters of water is uh, required for everybody so on an average you can drink up to 2.5 to 3 liters of water per day